bid you all a grand rising. I'm on my morning mental. I know a lot of y'all tune in for this, and maybe some of you come for other reasons, but we know why we're here. If you are just joining me, just waking up, the sun has kissed your face. Most High has allowed you one more chance to join us in this place, this classroom, this prison, this hell on earth. One more time. But sometimes... It feels good, doesn't it? Sometimes it feels good. Sometimes you have that moment where you have a happy thought and you think to yourself, that'll be all right. And it doesn't feel so bad being here, but we stay anyway. So I bid you a grand rising. Welcome back. I'm on my morning mental this morning. Before I begin, I have to say to... Somebody, I'm not sure who I'm talking to. And maybe somebody finally got the message. Maybe somebody listened. And now they got the message. I'm on my morning mental. Y'all check this out. Y'all know that for my entire time here on Instagram, it has been a roller coaster. I've been thrown in in Instagram jail for telling the truth. I have had my... People blocked, not getting alerts when uh, we go live. I've also had people tell me that, you know, sound goes out. We had all kind of problems here. As a matter of fact, it was so incredible that we started talking about this was the most interrupted live stream on Instagram. While we watch others do things that we couldn't. Interestingly enough, um, Yesterday, we did a live stream that was seen by the entire world on multiple platforms at the same time. It was all platforms, uh, every plat- even some platforms outside of what most folks in America are even aware of. It covered all of the UK. It covered all of the continent of Africa. It covered um, Jamaica. And it covered the uh, Middle East. And... Nobody noticed until we were done that we had been on for two hours and 43 minutes with no interruptions, no nothing. It was perfect. It was as if we were on a completely different platform. And we kept waiting. And you all know we do 60 minute blocks here at Facts, I mean, at Morning Mental and over Facts Over Feelings. So we always have to break because there's a 60 minute limit. Yet we were allowed yesterday to talk to the world for two, almost three hours, nonstop. So I'm not sure who at Instagram got the message that now that we're leaving you and probably taking a good number of people with us, that now you want to treat us right. Now, when you see you're starting to lose, you want to act right. You think that, okay, okay, if we, if, we, if we censor him right now in front of company, in front of the entire world, it would solidify their case. That's what I thought. I did. That's what I thought, I'm, I'm, and I'm about to take y'all somewhere. I want y'all to hold on. I got something. That, I got to flip this on you. You know, I got it. I'm not just giving you this for nothing. I'm setting you up mentally. I'm waking you up this morning right here on the morning mental. I'm about to put something together that most of y'all have been distracted. So you didn't know what they did. Hold on a second. I'm about to really turn up in here. So that's what I thought. So I'm feeling good. I'm like, there's a brighter day. But we keep forgetting. No, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use the word forget. Forget's the wrong word. We keep falling under the spell of distraction. And they coming up with some good stuff to distract you. They coming up with some stuff to distract you that even when I tell you, like I did before, when I tell you this, you're going to be like, oh, man, that's how they work. 
And people are always talking about, well, who's the they? Who's the they you talking about? See, that's the problem. They want to get you hung up on some petty discussion trying to identify who they is without letting you just come to the conclusion that irregardless of who they is, if I can see the proof of what they're saying exists right in front of me, if I can touch it, if I can smell it, if I can taste it, I don't give a damn who they identity is. I know they exist. People know you exist by the fruit of your work, not by the reputation that you claim to have. Y'all know exactly where I'm going with this, but let me do this revelation on you first. Oh, we got a few things that I want to put out this morning on the morning mental. It's been an interesting weekend, hasn't it? It's been a, a weekend of growth. It's been a weekend of awareness. It's been a week a weekend of the message is out there. But I got to... I got to rip off the veil this morning. Here we go again. Watch this. So when I noticed that this happened, and like most people do, I thought I had something to do with it. I immediately thought that I was important enough that they finally gave in, that we had reached this plateau. Yeah, we broke 100,000. I'm like, no, no, no. They were still censoring us after that. What made yesterday so different? Now I need my students to stay with me. Y'all remember about um, four months ago. No, 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 no. It was, matter of fact, it was during the beginning of the quarantine. So we're talking around March time frame. You all remember I did a story about a piece of legislature that was moving through the Congress and it raised all kind of red flags and bells and whistles, but they didn't make a lot of noise about it because they thought they could slide it on through. And then the only time that you find out about it is when you break the law. How many of y'all ran into a situation where they try to tell you that you did something wrong and you're like, hold on a minute, is that against the law? And they be like, yeah, it's been against the law since da, da, da. And you go and do your research and find out they passed a law. I give, okay, let me give you an example. Um, how many of y'all know that that the State Department can suspend your passport? Watch this. They can take your passport from you, your valid passport. Really, you shouldn't need nothing to travel back and forth, but we're going to play the little game. You, your passport, which is a control item, that they can suspend your passport. This is the State Department. You know what the State Department is. State Department deals with diplomacy with other countries. They make sure that we stay on the even keel. We stay in the geopolitical world. That's what they do. But they can suspend, because they issue passports, suspend your passport if, watch this, and brothers and sisters who don't understand the impact of the system, if you can work it out, work it out. Stop giving, the, don't stop giving the fate of our people and putting it in the hands of other people who don't give a damn about the then when it's time for them to do certain things to protect you. They can't because their hands is tied. They can't come to your aid and protect you because you put them in a system to put a noose around their neck that if they try to help you, it's going to hang them. You did that. This is an example. Because this is what they took from you, turned around, and now using it against you. Somebody in the Clinton administration slid a law in that said that if you, and I'm not saying that anybody's off the hook here, if you owe, you owe, you do what you do, but in the child support system, uh, if you if you fall behind so much in arrears or you fall behind so much in just in payments. OK. Um, or you have a judgment against you. Let's say you just found out about the kid. So the kid is five years old. So they're going to say you owe all that back to them. So you automatically and got a big back, got a big amount. If you fall into that category, they can suspend your passport and you can't get it back unless you do two things. And the, the second one is the hardest one. Look what they put. This is the law. Most people find this out when they go to renew their passport or they try to get a passport and they tell them this. And they're like, when we start all that, where was the, where was their big announcement? Should, isn't somebody supposed to come out and go hear ye, hear ye or some shit like that? But anyway, what they can do is you have to pay off the whole amount. Watch this. You're buying your freedom. You have to pay off the whole amount. Let's say it's $150,000. You got to pay off the whole amount plus whatever you already paying. Then that ain't it. You don't pay the debt. You don't pay all your loot. Then turn around and you have to get a letter 
from, let's say, uh, the child support agency or whatever state you're dealing with, they got to send a letter to the state department. And then the state department, watch this, still got to review everything. And then they make a decision whether or not they're going to give you your passport back. So you don't pay all this loot. This is the law. This is how they slide stuff through. Now, most people ain't got it like that. If you sitting there and you and you you working check to check and you paying your child support and this, that, and the third, that's a balancing act. See, that's a balancing act when you black. Well, white folks, that don't, I don't know. I'm not making the racial. I'm just talking about the financial divide in the United States when the mean the mean our value of a of a black person is almost is only one third of that of a white family. There is a financial disparity in this country that don't nobody want to talk about. Stop telling us to pull ourselves about bootstraps when all you gave us was flip flops. I got to use that one on somebody. But the point I'm making is that this system is legal. Everything I just said to you is legal. They're not doing anything to you. They're not picking on you. That is a law that they slid through. And, and, and a lot of people who have gone through this process said to hell with it. But guess what? Now you can't leave your country. You're a prisoner in your own country. Now we live in a time when some people might have to leave and they can't leave now. Uh, now you got to be a criminal. You understand what I'm saying? You see what they th they forced you into? Though, that's because you let somebody else write a law about you that they knew was going to disproportionately affect you. Well, if you thought that was interesting, try this one on for size. So I went in, you know, I'm trying to figure out, uh, I did my research because maybe they had made some changes to Instagram that maybe you can stay on longer. So I went and I couldn't find anything. But I did find something very interesting. Y'all remember I did a story about the Earn It Act? Yes, the Earn It Act. The E-A-R-N-I-T. The Earn It. Like you earn something. Remember I talked to y'all about the Earn It Act? The Earn It Act was a piece of legislature they were trying to put through the Congress on the low low that had a good side and it had a bad side and it was put on it was put on the books for a good purpose. But remember, it was well-intentioned. It was a well-intentioned dragon. It had good intentions, but we all know that the road to hell is paved with what? Turn to your name and say good intentions. So they, they they wrapped it up in we have to stop child pornography on the internet. That was the reason. A noble reason. That should be stopped. It's, it's tragic. If it's happening, shut it down. Unfortunately, like I always tell people, did you read the bill? Did you read the bill? I started reading the bill. I just happened to have a copy right here. Y'all know how we get down. I started reading the bill, y'all, and um, two things jumped out about the bill. The first thing that jumped out about this bill was that there was a piece in here that said it would abolish end-to-end -end encryption. You know how you talk on secure platforms like, uh, what is it, Wire, and they got another one. Some you can, It's just y'all. It's, it's your privacy. It's, a, it's not us talking. This is a public platform. Trust me, I know what I'm saying on here. So I control what I say, but on a secure platform, nobody knows who's talking about what. Who We don't know nothing. You can't even tell who's on it. It's private. This would make that illegal. That means they can hear everything you say everywhere at any time. Can you say Mark of the Beast? Be everywhere. Be all-knowing. Be all-powerful. How are you going to be all-knowing if you can't hear everything? That scripture being fulfilled right there. Y'all talking about the mark of the beast coming. I'm showing you what they about to do to you. So this was going to abolish end-to-end -end encryption. No more scramble nothing. That also would abolish what we call blockchain technology. If you don't know what blockchain technology is, then go ahead and research it yourself. But if you've ever heard of Bitcoin, Bitcoin is just one iteration of blockchain technology. With blockchain technology, I can encrypt something and the only person that can open it up is the receiver. Nobody else. Now apply that to other things like medical records, court records, financial records. That means you don't have to pay anybody anymore to hold your information to make it secure. You got the key. And the only person that can open it is the person that you give the, give the key to. And everybody who opens it, it leaves a record. So if I get a hold of your, of your blockchain, I can look at everybody who ever opened it, closed it, looked at it, smelled it, kicked it around. I'm telling y'all what's going on behind the scenes that will affect everything you do today. If you don't care about nothing I'm talking about right now, it still affects you. You're going to go in and try to do some shit and you're going to be like, well, I can't do that because they passed the law, you dumbass. All right. 
So that jumped out from this bill. But the other thing that jumped out from this bill, y'all stay with your boy now. Here it come. I got to give you the, the vinegar first. Here come the sugar. Well, it's sugar. In this bill, there is a provision that would make companies like Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and TikTok and any other platform that exists or will exist, it will make it make them liable for things you say or do to another person. You know how y'all like to get on here and talk shit about people? Y'all know how y'all like to make fake websites and people think that it's me and y'all saying bullshit? You know how you like to make little ghost accounts and then come on here and talk shit and think can't nobody trace you down because see there's no money behind it yet. They passed this law and y'all know that over shit, almost everybody on here gonna get sued by somebody for saying something. But you're suing Instagram. Now, that would put companies like Instagram out of business overnight. The legal action alone would blow them out the water. So all this censoring, all of this not sending people they alert shit, all of this making sure you can see the screen go black, all that bullshit. See, that's somebody that y'all don't know that's sitting up there that's doing that shit because they see everything we say. They're watching it on the screen. If they don't like what they're hearing, let's say that, let's say you got some racist person sitting up there. I don't want to hear that bullshit. So you're messing with the broadcast. Now they ain't going to get no alerts. You understand what I'm saying? They passed this law and you can sue their ass completely out of existence. And y'all know I'll be the first one to do it. So it wasn't when I thought about that, I said, well, that's that's interesting. So you see what they've done? They've taken something really, really messed up, taking away your encryption. But they tied it to something you want. Man, I got to get it. These motherfuckers here. You understand what I'm saying? Example. For the record, there are no other NFAC accounts on Instagram. If you see somebody with the official NFAC or NFAC this or NFAC that, they are lying. You are being played. Someone is imitating us. You understand what I'm saying? If someone is collecting money, if they all in a secret group and you in there giving them your money, you giving your money, you are a fool. There, we don't collect money. We haven't received a donation since I created this thing. We don't ask y'all for money. So if somebody, if you think that you get no, y'all better spread the word. This is the kind of stuff that Instagram don't want to get sued for. I know a lot of people ain't got nothing better to do. But to sit around and be hateful and sit around and be cowards behind the phone and sit around and be keyboard gangsters or sit around and want to be couch philosophers. I know a lot of y'all love to do that because you can't help it. You're born that way. It's in your DNA. You understand? So it's here to stay. We already understand that. It's like having a stealing uncle. Y'all love him, but y'all know you can't you can't lay shit around. You're like, oh, they go Bonnie. Oh, I love him. Man. Get your wallet, baby. Because you know he your stealing uncle. But he's still family. So we know how jacked up Instagram is. But they still family because y'all still in their house. We up in their house talking right now, but we know what kind of house it is. Well, how about this? I was uh, doing my research and I came across an article that's in the business of federal technology, which is a which is a Senate judiciary publication that gets around to the Senate. Why would I get it? Because as a former presidential candidate, I get all of those publications to this day. And I was reading this particular uh, 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 publication and I found out that the Earn It Act unanimously passed the Senate Judiciary Committee on July the 2nd. So it looks like it's on its way for that vote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Senate Judiciary Chairman Lindsey Graham, y'all know Lindsey without his hood on, um, he said that social media sites have become fertile hunting grounds for child predators, and he cited letters that he had received from sexual abuse victims supporting the bill. That's great, Lindsey, except what about the part about taking away our encryption, and what about the part about us getting to sue the shit out of all of these social media? You ain't saying nothing about that. 
So you had to keep the focus on one thing. He says, the idea of other sick men looking at my father abusing me makes me sick. That's what somebody said. They said to him. So basically what they did was they put a bill together. Because if you go online and say the wrong thing about somebody now, I can't, I'm going to come after you anyway because you know I'm the pull-up master. But I can turn around and sue the people that made it possible now. You see what I'm saying? It's just like in North Carolina. Only in North Carolina. Y'all tell me if they got it in other states, but I know they got it in North Carolina. They got a law that if your spouse cheats on you with somebody else, you can sue the person that they cheated with for the damages to your marriage. You cost me my marriage. I, and it, I had everything just right. Here you come along. And yeah, the other person is already penalized, but you can sue them. And there are cases where people have had to pay up. Was it worth it? I don't know. So they, so now this bill is about to move through. And if this bill becomes law, they already know their ass is in hot water. So that's why yesterday, I think I was allowed to talk to the world for two hours and 43 minutes, non-stop, not one interruption. Everybody who was on, it was clean, it was clear. Everybody was sitting there like, this is amazing. I'm sitting there too, like, this shit ain't cut off yet. I didn't get the 60-minute countdown. I'm thinking it got something to do with me. No, 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 no. They know what's about to happen. You see, you got to remember companies and corporations like this. Instagram is owned by Facebook. Y'all know that. This is still Facebook. It's just a, a different version. And Zuckerberg has no what's about to pop off. He's up in D.C. He's seen the shit move through. They done threw all the money at it they can. They said, we ain't trying to hear that shit. We trying to deal with this child pornography that's going on. You know we dealing with child pornography, right? You know that's all this is about, right? You do want to help us with this child pornography thing. But he read the bill. And he's like, yeah, but you about to get us fucked up, bro. You understand what I'm saying? Once I became aware that that happened, I said, oh, six now. But notice they haven't said nothing to nobody about that. So for everybody who's wondering how we managed to pull off that magic trick that we pulled off yesterday, I say it to you again, pay attention to what's going on around you because everything is not always what it seems. I was looking at the uh, news this morning and I noticed in a lot of the headlines um, that they was talking about a lot of stuff. Um, they had all kind of headlines. They was talking about, you know, things that was going on in different places, talking about the, talking about the pandemic that's still going on. They were talking about all that. What they wasn't talking about was the history making black guns formations that happened in the United States last week and um, still had to, uh, yet to address it. Uh, and of course, we've already talked about why they won't address it. But I'm going to keep talking about it because it was history. It was black history. So when Black History Month comes, somebody needs to go up to Stone Mountain and reenact that for us. I wanted to start off by uh, by dealing with a couple things. Got some housekeeping here, things to do. Um, I told you all once before, there are no other NFAC pages on Instagram. If you are ascribed to one of those groups, then you are doing something that I have to question your judgment. Um, again, um, people will say, well, why don't you have the blue check? They wouldn't give me a blue check if I turned myself into a goddamn box of Crayola crayons. We've already done that many times. We said to hell with it. Now, all of a sudden, it's going to become an issue because the blue check was, was created just for shit like this so that you would know who's speaking for real and who's not. And in a situation where you're talking about a group of black people with guns, I think that you want to want to make sure that you're listening to the right people. Because if somebody tells you to run off and go do some shit and you think I told you and then we're like, well, Jay told us on Instagram, they're going to come back over here and look at how these accounts are put together and say, he didn't tell y'all to do that shit. You just committed first degree murder on your own. You're going to prison for the rest of your life. So keep running around with some shit. This is kryptonite. You don't want to play with this. This is not some fad. This is not a social club. This is nothing like that. What I'm doing over here, I told y'all, this is steak and, steak and, steak and, what is it, steak and potatoes? Yeah, steak and potatoes. This ain't milk and cereal. Did you play with this right here? Somebody gonna get burned. 
And it might be you. See, a lot of y'all don't understand how this thing is working out right now. There is a spirit of karma that's orbiting the earth and everything is coming out. All everything done in the dark is coming to the light. People flip. Look at what I mean. People breaking up and married for I don't know how many years and we thought they had the perfect. Well, listen to me. It is a season of karma. And it goes both ways. It's karma for you. It's karma for me. It's karma for your co-worker. It's karma for the pastor. It's karma for the bum on the streets. It's karma for the government. Okay, it's karma for the world right now. We hanging out with y'all in Revelation 13. That's the chapter we living in right now. A lot of y'all don't even know that. Why? Because you put that off a long time ago. You're too busy to read that stuff. Did you? Were you also too busy to remember that we are still under a national declaration of emergency for the no, the novel coronavirus disease outbreak? Have y'all forgot that 45 signed that on, on March the 12th of 2020? That 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 um that they had put this emergency into place. We haven't been brought out from under that yet. We are still under a state. Of emergency. Everything that's happening right now is happening under a state of emergency. The police brutality, state of emergency. Okay. The COVID-19, state of emergency. High unemployment, state of emergency. No more stimulus, state of emergency. Racial tensions about to explode worldwide, state of emergency. Earthquakes, famine, locusts, state of emergency. Y'all understand what I'm saying? But you did notice that the mass shooting stopped. Haven't had one of those in a while. The lynchings stopped after Stone Mountain. Okay, so we know, we know some things can be stopped. But everything else, don't forget, we are under a state of emergency. And I taught y'all this four months ago. Once they declared a state of emergency... They can start opening up all these other acts. So whatever act they pass under the state of emergency is handled a little differently because they're saying it's in support of the state of emergency. So they're saying that in the state of emergency, child porn is so bad that we got to do something. But while we add it, let's lock down the Internet and let's let's let these motherfuckers sue. It's almost as if the government is trying to destroy a platform, the last platform of freedom of speech. Now. Maybe Instagram, Facebook, and all of them thought that they were boys and they could be in on it, you know, so they messing with us. Yeah, we about to shut y'all down. It's about to be some 1984 shit going on. No. See, y'all don't understand a totalitarian government. A totalitarian government, all you got to do is look at who are the enemies or who have always been the enemies of the United States. Totalitarian governments, but they can't get in, persuade them, weasel their way in, you know, try to get their resources, all of that. They no, no, no. They don't, they don't, they don't talk to people like that. And they always at odds with people like that. Okay, like Iran. That's why they at odds with Iran. Iran got a leader. That's how we do it. Everybody on the same page over here. We ain't trying to hear that bullshit you talking. You don't fuck with us, we don't fuck with you. You fuck with us, we gonna fuck with you. We we stay away from folks like that. Okay? Lil Korea got nukes talking shit all day. It popping them in the middle the ocean. Yeah, we over here. What's happening? Boo, boo, boo. Don't give a fuck. United States don't want to deal with that. Mm -mm. Don't talk about it. Don't want to talk to them. They'd rather go pick on somebody who ain't got shit. Matter of fact, this is the craziest part. They'd rather go pick on somebody that they put in power. Like, you get what I'm saying? That's like people who go to work and they're afraid to speak up at their job, but they go home and beat their kids. Okay, you went into these countries, you put in a puppet, a puppet dictator, you put in somebody you could control, you armed them, you gave them chemical weapons, you did all this, gave them all this money, boo, built them up, told them they would, they shit didn't stink, let them do as long as they was your boy. Other people over here talking shit, poo, 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 y'all ain't trying, they talking like we right here, cousin. Where y'all at? They was talking huge. They talk so huge that the big boy on the block, China, was like, go ahead, see what they're going to say. We right here. I like this shit. You understand what I'm saying? They ain't going to mess with that. They're going to go home and beat their kids. Black people in America, you the kids that's getting beat. Because they can't do that to everybody else. You always going to be the kid that's going to get beat on when they come home. Because they really don't want that smoke with nobody. Okay? They want everybody 
whether it be through money or through some form of protection, that they cool with you. Okay? That shit don't work out. They come back here and beat the kids. That'd be us. But I want to ask y'all a question. Because sometimes, don't it feel good when you can think of how things could be? Don't it feel good when, when y'all start thinking about uh, how we want to end racism? You know what I'm saying? And, and, and how we want to, how we want to, well, we want everybody to work together. And we all, you know, we, we get to this, what I call this Star Trek universe. See, Star Trek had, was a universe where everybody, no matter what race you was, everybody was a part of what was going on to explore the universe, all that bullshit. But most people don't realize that in Star Trek, there's a very key element that they talked about and went in one ear and out the other because most of y'all wasn't paying attention. You see, they do stuff right in front of you, almost as if to tease you. To show you this is what it could be like, but no. Black Panther was like that, the movie. They showed you what it could be like, but no. When people show you what it could be like, that means they know better. They don't have to go relearn and get desensitized. They already know. They already know. You don't know. Now, we're still living under a state of emergency. And they about to slide this act through on you. Okay, the good and the bad would then come out. Facts, facts. But one of the things that has started to come out for us lately is I'm beginning to hear some talk from my own peoples with regards to what y'all wants to do as far as where we go is dividing down two lines. Those who want to stay here opposed to those who want to leave. Mm -hmm. Those who want to stay here, watch where I'm going with this, that's really not the issue. What I find amazing and what we need to examine this morning is first of all, is you all have a love affair, a love affair. We call it constitutional fidelity. There is, there is a book by the Fordham Law Review where they talked about black Americans have been as faithful to the constitution that has looked at very differently by the version espoused by their contemporary courts. It is a constitution that abolished slavery, private pre civil war, that provided free slaves with 40 acres and a mule during reconstruction, that invalidated separate but equal facilities prior to Brown versus, uh, Brown versus the Board of Education, and that continues to mandate a radical dismantling of the discriminatory structures despite the Supreme Court's adherence to the doctrine of colorblindness. Surely black people are the main practi practitioners of what we call ideal constitutionalism, which solves the problem of fidelity. In other words, you're so in love with the Constitution and all of its parts, even though it was not written for any of us. You keep believing that the goal of equal citizenship is what we're truly after. That, so that's why we're so in love with this Constitution. Black people's first commitment is to the establishing of their inclusion of the Constitution. You politely and you do it in a fidelity way. It's just as you as you're achieving an objective. We're making progress. You're making progress by trying your best to be included in a document that was not written for you. I'm just being honest. I'm not going against anything. See, there are pieces that we can pick and choose, like the right to bear arms and freedom of speech and and and, and prohibition of a search and seizure, those type basic things. But when you dig into the loftier parts of the Constitution, you begin to realize right off the bat, who did they write this for? Because all this shit, I can't, uh -uh, it's not practical for us. Because if it was, we wouldn't be in the condition that we're in. If these things were true, you wouldn't have had to have a 13th Amendment. If, you, if these things were true, you wouldn't have had to have a 14th Amendment. If all the things before it were true, you had to write some shit in for us. So that should tell y'all right off the bat that you're in love with a document. You're in love with that document so much that you think that if we had a mass exodus from this country to our own country somewhere else, that you would be all right under that constitution. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Um, I would much more rather you become more in love with the constitution that you help write. I would be more enamored with a constitution that reflected our 
top priorities, our top concerns, our top freedoms, our top prohibitions as a people. I would be more uh, thrilled. I would say, don't it feel good to be unified? Don't it feel just the thought of us all being unified in spite of our differences, still being unified. We just, just when you see another brother, it's all right. When you see another sister, it's good. Because we all on that, we, we, we walking in unity. We're walking in unity. And I don't mean walking in unity just physically. I mean, we're walking in unity. So when you see another brother, another sister, even if you think we're just doing this for a week, okay? Every brother and sister I see, I'm going to be good to. Every brother and sister I see, I'm going to try to think of something positive to say before I open my mouth and say something negative. Every brother and sister I see, I'm not going to be afraid to ask their opinion when I'm afraid or I'm unsure or something. Every brother and sister I see, I'm going to ask them, hey, look, bro, you need a little help with that? I see you struggling to read over here. Let me read that for you. Let's, let's, let me, look, I'm not going to, everybody on this page of unity. You in the store, you see this single mother struggling with all them damn kids and you and your homegirls over there. And y'all know y'all supposed to be supposed to be women too. Don't stand there and criticize. Go on over there and help her with them kids. Everybody on the spirit of unity. If we go one way, go with us. Y'all out there, y'all see something going down. All of a sudden, things ain't going right. One bro jump in and try to make it right. You know what I'm saying? Here comes somebody trying to break him up and stop him from doing right, but let the wrong keep going. Uh-uh. Don't it feel good? Unified. If the police pull up and, and they go into Brother Johnson's house, everybody come outside. What's going on? What's everybody? People out in bathrobes. What is all of this? Don't peek out your window and see the lights going. Ooh, girl, let me get me my phone. No, I'm going out here to see what's happening. Everybody. No unity. Y'all see two people arguing. Let's say you in the store and you see one of our people arguing with somebody else. You ain't got to go there and get in the fight. If all of y'all come together and somebody, hey, hey, bro, come on, let's walk, dog. It ain't even worth it, bro. Nah, nah, be bigger than that, man. We get nah, nah, nah. They just want to shatter our unity. <sighs> the greatest problem confronting America today is black people. Let that sink in. You all think that we're moving ahead when we give up something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. y'all think we're moving ahead when we give up something. That's not moving ahead. There is a concept that I've been kicking around. And before I do, before I can kick it around, uh, I've been doing my studying as I should. So I must bid a continental greeting and a uh, a, a warm hello to all of the good people of Nigeria, Ethiopia, Egypt, the, uh, the, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Tanzania, South Africa, Kenya, Uganda, and Algeria. Also, Sudan, Morocco, Angola, Mozambique, Ghana, Madagascar, Cameroon. Everybody down in Cote d'Ivoire, Niger, um, uh, Burkina Faso, Mali, Malau Malawi, Zambia, Senegal, Chad, Somalia, and Zimbabwe. I wanted to call all those countries out because those are the countries that did check in with me yesterday uh, after I spoke with them. Also, the good folks out in, uh, in, in uh, Guinea and Rwanda and Benin and Burundi, Tunisia, South Sudan, uh, Togo, Sierra Leone, Libya, the Congo, uh, Lib Lib Liberia, which I keep people telling me that that's ours already, the Central African Republic and Mauritania. Uh, all the good people that checked in from Etrichia, uh, Namibia, uh, Gambia, Botswana, uh, Gabon, Lesotho, uh, Guinea, Equatorial Guinea also. See, all these places I'm naming are in the motherland. These are all countries. These are not states. Uh, we also have Maritas, uh, Eswatini, uh, Djibouti, uh, Komodos, uh, um, Cabo Verde, is that how it's pronounced? I'm not sure. Uh, Satome, Principia, and Seychelles. These are all countries in Africa. I wanted to start off by bidding you all a hello and thank you for the warm, uh, the warm greeting I got yesterday. And I look forward to the state visit the meeting with the chiefs to talk about the future of what I have been calling something that has been around for a while. Let me talk about it just for a few minutes. The United States of Africa. And people are saying, well, he go with that again. You can actually look up the concept of the United States of Africa. I'm not the first one, apparently, that was given this vision. I thought I got it out of the blue. But this is proof that the ancestors talked through you. Because when I went and did my research, 
I was surprised to find out that the United States of Africa is a concept of federation of some or all of the 55 sovereign states on the continent of Africa, which is exactly what I said. The concept takes its origins 